Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little guy right here, Dragon Rush. It is put out by Vedra Games, and it is basically a cross between Tetris and Bejeweled, or... Uh, Candy Crush, or one of those other app games that you probably have played on your, your tablet or your phone. So uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to score the most points by uh, having gems and coins and dragon eggs and all this other kind of stuff drop into this pit, and you're trying to get triplets or three or more of different things so that they will explode and give you points. So uh, let's go ahead and get down to the table. I'll show you how it works, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. So here I have a four-player game of Dragon Rush set up for you. I do have the board already seated with some gems and stones and uh, coins and uh, ash clouds and stuff like that, but it usually starts empty. Uh, but uh, for the sakes of showing the game, uh, I decided to go ahead and seed the board a little bit. Uh, each player at the beginning of the game is going to take a dragon card uh, that is going to be double-sided. It has a column on one side and then it has an L shape on the other. And uh, we'll get to what that means in just a few moments. Uh, there is a bag full of uh, different kinds of uh, coins and uh, gemstones and dragon eggs and... Uh, all of these different kinds of things. These are double-sided. So you see that this one has uh, an emerald on one side and a copper coin on the other, while this one has a diamond on one side, oh, and a copper on the other. This one has a, a yellow gem, I don't know what that might be, and a silver coin on the other. So these are all double-sided. So at the beginning of the game, all of these gems are actually put inside the bag. And once, once that has been done, you can start the game. Now, on your turn, you're going to follow a certain number of processes, uh, and those processes will be followed by everybody during every turn of the game. The first thing you do is you have to determine your fortune. So you can take your dragon card, and you can place it either on the L-shaped side or on the column side, whichever you choose. Now, if you don't want to choose or you don't know which one would be better, you can use this uh, fate token and determine your fate. So you would just simply take the token and flip it. If it lands on the angry side, which is the red side, then you would place it on the L-shaped. But if it lands on the happy face side, then you would be able to place it on the column way. So once uh, you determine which way your card is going to be oriented, uh, then you're going to draw three tokens from the bag. And when you draw these tokens, it's important that you keep them in the same orientation as they came out of the bag. So the first side that you see, that's where it's going to be placed face up anywhere on your card here. So let me get this into the thing a little bit. And so maybe I want to place this one here. And then we draw another one. And okay, it's another one, another uh, onyx or, am or whatever that is. And then this one comes out as a gem. Uh, emerald like this. Now, once I have uh, the order and orientation of the gems or tokens, I can take my uh, card and place it on any side of the board, anywhere on any side of the board, and I can also orient it however I want, twisting it and turning it however that is. Now, the point of the game is to try to score points by getting groups of three to line up and then explode. All right, so first thing we're going to be able to do is we form the triad, which we do here, and then we're going to place the triad on the core border of the board wherever we want it to go. Let's say that maybe I want it to come over here and be dropped in this fashion right over here. Now, uh, once I determine the orientation of the card and what side of the board, they're going to drop and make contact. So these will go until they all make contact like this. Uh, so you can kind of think Tetris. You're dropping it from the top of the board and it's going to stack wherever it stops. Now, once one thing has made contact with another, each of the others stops. So even though this one over here did not make contact with anything, it stops with the, with the row or column or L-shaped pattern that it fell in with. Now, if a group of three or more is made by that making contact, then these are exploded and you're going to score points for those. So for example, these three would come away. A group of three uh, 
emeralds will gain you two points. And if they match the color of the dragon that was the active player, that dragon will also get an additional one point. So for the green player, uh, this would score three points. But for anybody else, it would only score two points. And so those points are taken and put beside. Now, if coins are exploded, all but one of those coins are go back into the bag and one coin is kept to be used as a treasure that can trigger different abilities uh, in another turn. Now, the kinds of things that can be triggered by using your treasures, you actually have two opportunities to use treasures. Uh, you have one opportunity uh, just before you form your triad by placing things on your card. And then you also have another opportunity after all of the explosions have happened on the board from creating different groups of three or more on the board. But the different things that you can do as uh, you are using treasures is, first of all, coppers can be used to flip one token of your choice. So if you used a copper, you could say, I'm going to flip this one right here and, and change it over to its other side. If you decide to use a silver token or coin, then the player can flip two tokens of their choice or they can explode one token, uh, either a gem, a coin, or an ash cloud right here. Oh, by the way, when that triplet of emeralds was destroyed, this ash cloud also goes away back into the box. Ash clouds are pretty much just things that take the space up, make it more difficult to uh, uh, score different triples and that type of thing. If you use a gold uh, for your treasure use, then you can flip three tokens of your choice or you can explode two tokens of your choice, or you can move one token from one space to another, like this, as long as it is adjacent. Once your turn has ended, it will proceed to the next player. So we just did green, so we'll do red now. And so they're gonna attempt fate. They're gonna flip this and see what happens. All right, it's on its mean side. So we're gonna keep it that way, oriented in an L-shaped fashion. And then they're going to uh, take tokens and place it on their board, uh, however they see fit. And there we go. So not a very good pull. Uh, two ash clouds and an onyx. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and do... We're going to bring it over here so that it will come in this way. And so what will happen here is this will come here and then all of these will go here like so. Since he was able to make contact and had a triple form, then these will explode and score him points. These two ash clouds will also explode because they were adjacent to the explosion and be put away back in the box. And then these onyx score only one point. So he will score one point like so. And these gems will go back into the bag for a later pull. And then the next person would take their turn. And this is how the game would continue until you could not make any more triplets on the board without having different kinds of gems fall off the board and that type of stuff. And then at that point, uh, the person who has the most points is the winner. But there are different modes how to play. What I just explained to you is the what they call the classic version. So that's it for Dragon Rush. Um, I, I think I need to say on the onset here that this is not the kind of game that I really enjoy playing. Now, I will say that I have been, uh, I've gotten a lot of enjoyment. I've passed a lot of time by playing games like Tetris and Candy Crush and Bejeweled and that type of stuff. But they, while they work well in an app version on uh, where I can just, you know, play uh, uh, by my lonesome and I don't have to have other people around the table that are it works as an app. I don't think it works as a board game uh, for me. Now, other people, you might enjoy this and this might be completely straight down your alley. But for me, on the onset, I just want to make sure it's clear. This is not my kind of game and I don't enjoy playing this kind of game in a board game form. So without that, with that having been said, let's go ahead and get to some pros of the game. First of all, the pros of the game is that, uh, you know, while they are very basic and foundational in quality, I think that the components are decent. Now, I do, I do 
see where you know there are some coins that are kind of offset the the way that the uh, machine cut them uh, just doesn't look like a coin it, it's just off center uh, ever so slightly on some of them more so on others so with with that caveat the the component quality is decent it's not great um, it is functional I guess you could say uh, the artwork on the cards is also neat uh, the dragons are cute I guess you could say even though they are the same image on all of the cards just the color has changed for them um, these tokens are, are nice I think that these are, are a little bit gaudy for point tokens but uh, this was unwieldy to flip as well because it even with my bigger hands it it, it just doesn't quite rest right, and uh, you kind of have to get some practice at flipping that thing around. So uh, that was one thing that we found. Um, as so, uh, the component quality is decent. It's not great. It's not ground shaking, but it's not bad either. The gameplay is fast. That that could be another pro of the game in, in that your turn uh, comes and goes rather quickly, and you do feel like you have. Uh, some control over what's going on. You can choose which side of this card you're going to play. You're going to choose the orientation of and which side of the board it's going to fall into. So there's a lot of, I guess you could say, strategy and or tactics that are involved there and, and some good choices to be made. So that's good. Um, but you have all of that in a very... Uh, I guess you could say efficient engine because your turn does go very quickly. So there isn't a whole lot of downtime. Uh, I will say though that uh, you cannot really plan ahead at all because it, your turn is really based upon what you pull out of the bag. So there is a little bit of that as, where, as well. Unfortunately though, I think that's about the uh, extent of the pros for the game as far as I'm concerned. Um, some of the cons of the game are simply that I just don't enjoy this game as a board game form. I, I would much rather be playing this kind of game on an app, uh, on some type of device. Uh, so the gameplay for a board game is not fun, in my opinion. Uh, you could enjoy it very much. I just simply don't. Uh, so that is a con for me. This, this, this style of game is not fun in a board game form for me. Uh, it, it's it's too I guess you, I guess you could say two dimensional. I, I wish games like this had more dimensions to it, um, uh, but it's just not fun. Another pro of the of the of the game is that we felt that the game board was a little bit too large uh, because you're only dropping um, threes, you know, triads, groups of three at, at a time. And um, you can pretty much fit those in however you wish because you do have a lot of control over the orientation of your card, what side of the board your card comes in on, and all this other kind of stuff. So you can, you know, one of the things is is that the board is, the, the end game triggers is that the board is supposed to fill up and you can't make any more of those things. But we rarely had issue with uh, finding things that could, uh, would explode. Um, so... Maybe that was just uh, an anomaly. Maybe that was just something that uh, happened uh, on a whim, I guess you could say. But we never had trouble with the board filling up at all. And it just felt like uh, the game was <laughs> almost uh, unending. But it is. It does end. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's an overstatement. But it just felt that way as we were playing it. So uh, that's another con. Is that I think that the board is just too large. Could have been... Uh, maybe one or two rows on each side uh, uh, smaller, and that would have made the game a little bit tighter, uh, a little bit more tension filled. So with all that having been said, I think it's, um, this is just an average game for me. So I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Uh, it's not really something that I'm gonna want to come back to. I wouldn't be opposed to playing it, but um, I, I, I would not readily want to play it again simply because this is not the kind of game that I enjoy uh, in a board game form. Um, uh, 5 out of 10 seems maybe a little harsh, but I don't think so. The way I usually view this is that a 5 is just an average game. A 6 is slightly above average. 7 is above average. 8 is a, a good, good game. A 9 is a very, very, very good game. And then a 10 is 
wow, you could not have done better if you had tried kind of game. You know, that's kind of that's how I look at it. And then it goes the same way uh, as you go below five. So five out of 10, I think is, is fair. Uh, from my perspective, at least, you might see this and say, wow, this is something that my kids will enjoy. This is something that uh, I will enjoy playing with my kids because they enjoy uh, Candy Crush or they enjoy uh, Bejeweled or uh, they enjoy Tetris, you know, those kinds of things. So uh, I can see where this this would have an appeal, um, but I don't think it's going to have that wide of an appeal, which is why I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. And on top of that, I did not enjoy it very much at all. But I can see how uh, in some way, shape, or form, this would have a, uh, a lot of staying power, especially for maybe a family group or something to that effect that is going to be teaching their kids about spatial organization or planning their move once they have drawn their tokens and that type of thing. So I can see where it's a, a possible uh, good thing, but I don't just I just don't think that it's going to be that for me. So uh, with all that being said, that is uh, Dragon Rush, a 5 out of 10 from me, but I do see where it could be uh, have a little bit more staying power in a family weight situation. So thanks for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side.